happiness, our, our love, and all that we need. Thank you that we have hope. Thank you that we can believe and trust in your faithfulness. Thank you that even in this moment, Lord, you are aware of how your Holy Spirit needs to touch the hurting parts within us, the parts within us that are in enmity with your, your Holy Spirit, so that, Lord, you can lead us into a life of freedom um, and a life of service and love. I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will speak to us powerfully, that you will move us, that you will shake us out of sleep and wake us up, Lord, to a bright new day and hope in you. I pray, Lord, that you be with us this evening, be in the words we speak, be in our hearts and our minds, um, and help us, Lord, that wherever we go from here, that we walk by faith and not by sight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Kors. I, I can see a few more people have just joined us. So let's, uh, guys, you missed out on just a uh, uh, temperature check and seeing how you are. So, uh, this is Kati. Uh, can you go ahead and just tell us how you are and how you're feeling? And then Nana, you can follow suit. Okay, uh, Nana, you can go ahead, man. Hey, Hi, everyone. Hey. I'm good. Just hot from Joburg, but yeah, otherwise good. Yeah, man, we live in Africa. It has to be hot. Dumeleng, how are you? No one is hiding here. Everyone can say how they're feeling. How are you, Dumeleng? Okay, Bob says, well, how are you doing, man? Let's hear your voice, man. How are you doing, Bob? I know the running is doing well, but how are you doing? Yo, Webster. <laughs> yeah, Webster. Good evening, everyone. No, I'm, I'm also good. Uh, obviously, I can complain about the heat. It's not going to help. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm good. Thank you, guys. Okay, perfect. Look, without further ado, uh, just for those, I think I always, we always take it for granted that some people uh people are, are regulars here on sort of life so for those who are joining us for the first time you're, you're probably wondering who are we what are we about and what's the space about so what has brought us together is we're just a colorful group of strangers which are drawn together uh and and wanting to grow in god uh with and in going god spiritually physically and, and mentally so we we have this opportunity where we gather uh, on Wednesdays, and we just just unpack topics, and people share uh, what God is saying in their hearts and spirits. Obviously, driven by the Word, and yeah, that's who we are. And uh, welcome to Salt and Light. So, without further ado, um, uh, Mum Webster, we'll pass it over to you uh, for the Living as Moving Temples share. Go ahead, my love. Good evening, fam. Um, really, really good to be gathering again. I, I have to say a very special welcome to Honunana here, um, who calls me sis mom. But today I'm I'm feeling very honored to be seeing to be seeing on our Zoom. We'll go to Kona, my sis mom. I also have a sis mom. <laughs> um, Omambule Kati. Um, we're really, really pleased to have you. Um yeah, you're, you're welcome, and, and yeah, it just always feels amazing to have um, mothers, fathers, older brothers and sisters in the Lord among us, so it's really great to be here. Um, Itumeleng, I'm, I, I don't know which Itumeleng this is, but I, I'm, I'm certain it might be an Itumeleng that's joining us for the first time. If it is, um, you're very welcome. We're, we're, we're so pleased to have you here. As, as um, Bob Webster has said, we are, we're a group of people um, who are after God's heart and after God's kingdom, um, who are after a way of living that is divorced from religion and very much married to the King of Kings, uh, pursuing what it looks like to be salt and light in the world. Um, and yeah, we've, we've, we've been gathering for four years. We're from 
everywhere from all corners of, of, of South Africa. Some of us aren't even in South Africa anymore. Um, and, and we gather every Wednesday or every other Wednesday. You're welcome, feel at home. We're a very authentic, real bunch. You'll see a little bit of craziness here uh, because yeah, we just believe in, 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 in the fact that God, God wants us as we are. God's created us um, in a certain way. He's created our personalities and everything of who we are. So we come as we are. Um, um, it is, it's October and it's, it's quite a, a lot of us are at a place where we're tired. I know I haven't really taken a break this year. <laughs> and so uh, we're feeling it. Um, I want to encourage everybody to rest. I want to encourage that obedience and that trust in God to rest, to take the time to rest. And rest means rest of mind, rest of soul, rest of the body. I just wanna encourage us, and I'm speaking to myself as well here, to just be obedient to that instruction of rest. God has been speaking to us about rest um, and I can feel and sense that a lot of us are tired. Uh, I just wanna encourage us to enter into the rest of the Lord, not only as a discipline, but also that we do physically each week and as a rhythm of life, but also just in our mind, you know, um, to find rest in God. So we've been doing a series uh, that is our namesake, that is named after us. It's called the Salt and Light series. And we've been journeying through what it looks like to be salt and light. Uh, we have gone through a number of topics, um, we, but, 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 but more than anything, what we've learned and what God has taught us has been some stuff that's been pretty you know, that's shaken us. A lot of it has been even difficult to process and to receive, but more than anything, what God has been teaching us is what it is to be made in his image, what it is to be gods on earth, what it is to be the, the salt of the earth and the light of the world, what, what power we carry, what divine presence we carry. Um, he's been teaching us you know, what, what authority we carry as we walk in. So this is the last session um, we're having in this series. And kosi has been working on a new series that we're going to start soon um, on the kingdom, on what is the kingdom. Uh, and looking absolutely forward to that. Maybe at the end, she'll tell us a little bit about that series that's coming up. But on our last series, um, we're talking about being mobile temples. I want to front load by saying that this session is about the presence of God. It has always been about the presence of God. The very gospel has always been about the presence of God. It has always been about God inhabiting earth. It has always been about the presence of God coming to earth. So this session is about the presence of God. It is about being clothed in the presence of God. It is about the presence of God erupting and dwelling within us. It is about illuminating the presence of God. It is about what the gospel has always been about, which is God's presence being manifest on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That is what this session is about. And that is actually what we have always been called to. It is what the Great Commission is about. Go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We make disciples because we, what we are when we're making disciples is we're multiplying. You know, when in Genesis, um, the word uh, tells us that in Genesis, um, God gave the instruction to have dominion and to multiply. And so, even now, the call and the commission is to have dominion because we are the presence of God on earth and to multiply. Um, I have a little bit of a disturbance here. Please forgive me. Um, sorry about that. So God's initial design 
as we speak about this instruction um, to, 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 to have dominion and to multiply, God's initial design was always to have his presence with people. God's initial design was always to have his people, his creation, be vessels of his presence on earth, be images of him on earth. And so when you look in Genesis, you see a world, you see Eden, the Garden of Eden, you see a world where there is no need for a temple structure because in the beginning, as creation, we understand what it means to be the image of God. We carry the image of God. There's no need for us to create a temple to go into the presence of God. We understand that we carry the presence of God. We understand that we are the presence of God. In Genesis 3, we then become alienated from the presence of God. We become alienated from the presence of God and moving forward from there. And what I'm gonna be sharing through this, this session and this message is the process that then happened in God reconciling with us in different ways, in God bringing his presence and giving us access to his presence in different ways. So we'll talk first about the first temple. And the reason why I'm taking us through the temples is because when we talk about being mobile temples, when, when, when in Romans, Paul says that, when Paul says to the Romans that our bodies are the temple of, of the Lord, um, we'll talk later about when Jesus says, refers to himself as a temple. There's a, there's a, there's a context, there's a reference uh, throughout history and throughout the story of God to a temple and to temples. And, and this reference to temples was God's process of reconciling us with him, of giving us access to him as God after we had alienated ourselves from the presence of God. So first want to share on what was a temporary temple, the tabernacle, which in Exodus, Moses would go to. Uh, the tabernacle, which was a dwelling, a tent structure, which Mo Moses was instructed and the Israelites were instructed to set up, which was called the place of meeting. So you have this temple, this temporary temple, which is the tabernacle, which the children of Israel, as they're journeying towards the promised land, have and make and set up in order to be able um, for Moses to be able to meet with God, receive instruction from God, and then go back to the Israelites and share that instruction, to be able to meet with God, be in the presence of God, and be able to take what he gets from the presence of God to the children of Israel. Um, I'm going to briefly uh, read Exodus 25, 8. We're going to refer to scripture quite a bit. So we're going to be paging through a bit. So I just want to make reference to to this particular temple, um, Exodus 25, 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. And this was, as, as, I've, as I've shared, the temples that we're going to talk about was God giving us access to him again. It was God God has been consistent in his desire to dwell among us. God has been consistent in his desire to make his presence known among us, to make his presence felt among us, to have us be in his presence. And so that is, that is what the tabernacle was. You look then at the rest of the temples that are built. We later find in scripture and we find in history that um, David has a desire uh, to be able to build a dwelling for God. And Solomon is the one who then builds the first temple. And that first temple 
um, as well as the second temple. So he builds the first temple, uh, the temple is there. It is, it is where the Ark of the Covenant stays. Um, Ooh, and once went through in detail what the temple looked like here in Salt and Light, you know, um, and what that meaning is to us today. But you have the structure of the, of, of the temple, you have the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant is, that's the very presence of God, only the, holy, uh, the, the high priests are able to come into that. And you have the Israelites living and, and, and worshiping and following God's um, statutes and using the temple as a place where they are able to come into the presence of God, albeit through a, a priest. We then know that that temple is destroyed when the Israelites uh, are defeated by, by the Babylonians and by King Nebuchadnezzar. And it's mostly because of their disobedience that even that defeat happens. And so the temple is destroyed. Later on, um, we know that um, when the Persians um, are, 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 are in power, they then allow the Israelites to go back and to rebuild the temple. And the temple is rebuilt. Um, and it is later on again destroyed. And this is now after Christ. It is later on destroyed. This temple is destroyed this time uh, because the Israelites are actually in their own way and in their own minds protecting the statutes of God, they're protecting um, their faith, they're, pro they're protecting um, God's statutes and God's temple and, and you know everything that represents God's very presence against the Romans. And the Romans destroy that temple. But here's what I wanna focus on. I wanna focus on when we, when it is said that our bodies are the temple, of the Lord, when we talk about being moving temples. What is a temple? What is being made reference of when scripture refers to a temple? So first of all, the temple was a place of worship. The temple was a place of worship. It was a place where the Israelites would come and worship God. And so when we look at ourselves today and refer to ourselves as a temple, essentially what we're saying is that we're a place of worship. And at this point, I want to help us to redefine worship because for a lot of us, when we talk about worship, when we think about worship, uh, all we have in our minds is singing. <laughs> we think of singing and singing worship songs. And this is what we refer to as worship. And this is what we understand to be worship. But the word worship, when you look through scripture, especially when you look in the New Testament, the Greek, um, the Greek meaning um, of, of worship that was initially used it is really about hearts that are bowed down to authority. And so when we refer to ourselves as a place of worship, we're referring to ourselves as a place or as a vessel that is bowed down to authority. So what does this mean when I'm talking about myself as a mobile temple? What it means is that every way that I go and everything that I do, I am bowed down to authority. There is an authority that I bow down to. There is, there's an authority that I report to. There's an authority that I take instruction from. And so to be a place of worship, means that I am a place that bows down to the authority of God. I am a place that is bowed down to the authority of God. So when I come in somewhere and there are other authorities, I wanna say this again, 
when I come into a space, when I go somewhere, any place that I go to, and there is an authority that is responded to, there is an authority, Mina, when I come in, I come in and I know that I will not bow down to Baal. I come in and I know that there is an authority that is above all authorities that I bow down to. So while I will come here and I will use the ways of the kingdom and I will respect, I will respect the space I'm in. I will respect the authority that is there. I will recognize the ways of the place, but I know that my ultimate instruction and my ultimate authority comes from heaven. So to be a place of worship means that, it means to be bowed down to an authority that is in the heavens. It is to be bowed down to the authority of God. And so to worship, to worship and to be a place of worship means to be bowed down to that authority. The second thing is that the temple was a place of sacrifice. And this is, you know, one of the things that is quite hard to process. It is one of the harder and more difficult ones to process to our carnal minds because we process things through carnal minds. We process things through the way the world has taught us. And every time we hear the word sacrifice, we hear something horrible. <laughs> we hear something hard. We, 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 we hear something that means letting go of things that we love. But I'm praying, even as I speak today, that God would redefine sacrifice for us. That God would redefine for us what it means to be a place of sacrifice that sacrifice would be a joy, that sacrifice would be a pleasure, that the kind of sacrifice that is asked of God, asked of us by God would be a sacrifice that gives us joy, a sacrifice that makes our heart leap. And so to be a place of sacrifice would mean to us that we are joyful, at the privilege of being able to sacrifice things that are probably of absolutely no consequence when compared to the wealth and the riches of glory that are in God and are, are in the kingdom. And understanding there's this image of um, that I've seen before, and I'm sure you guys have seen this, seen it, and it's of Jesus reaching out his hand to a little kid and saying give it to me and behind him he's got this huge teddy bear and the little kid is carrying a small teddy bear and is saying but I love it I'm praying that God would open our eyes to the joy and the rewards of sacrifice that everything that we always think we are sacrificing or we're giving up for the kingdom we're actually receiving so much more it is actually an act of receiving um, more than it is an act of giving up something. Paul says in Romans that we are a living sacrifice, sacrifice that still lives. And this is because sacrifices traditionally were dead. But he says that we're living sacrifices because we have given up our old lives and we've been raised in Christ and we've been given a new life and we've been given an abandoned life. And so my prayer is that we would recognize 
the joy, the reward, the privilege of sacrifice, the privilege of giving up things that do not even serve us. Things that do not even serve us. Um, the consideration and the considerateness of God to take us through a process of saying, give me that little teddy bear. I want to give you a bigger one. And so as mobile temples, we are a place of sacrifice. We're a place of sacrifice. And then lastly, the temples were to the Israelites, a place where the powers of God himself spread throughout the world. So they were a contact point to the Israelites, the temple, first temple, second temple, the tabernacle, the first temple and the second temple. The temples were a place where the powers of God touched earth and then spread towards the rest of the world. The impact of that, the significance of that, when we think about ourselves today. So if to the Israelites, the temples were a place where the power of God touched earth, and spread to the world. Think about the significance of that if we are mobile temples. This means that I am a place where the power of God touches earth and spreads to the rest of the world. I am a contact point for the power of God. I am the vessel that receives and disseminates the power of God. This is what it means. This is what it means. It means that in um, Galatians, the writer says that the power that lives in us is the same power that raised Christ from the dead. And so this is the reference to that. The power of God, the same power that defeated armies, the same power by which David defeated a giant, the same power by which Mary bore the savior, a holy virgin Mary bore the sa a savior, the same power by which people were made to live, the same power through which the dead were raised to life, that same power, because I am a temple, comes to the earth, lands through me, and is then disseminated to the earth. And what's important to note here is that the power lands. It, it doesn't land and then just stay. It lands and it then multiplies. It's that reference to the dominion and the multiplication of Genesis have dominion and multiply. The power lands and is then multiplied and disseminated through me. So it's that same power that lands, that sits and that through me changes a whole industry and a whole landscape. It's that same power that lands on the earth through me changes a whole family and generations to come. It is that power that comes and lands through me and changes a whole company and everything about the way it operates. It is that same power that lands, comes through me and changes a whole nation. And the way things have been said to be done brings hope where there is hopelessness. It is that same power. It is the power of God, the creator, lands in me and works through me. And so there is no way 
we should be going into any space. And it's the same. There's no way we should be going into any space and lives are the same. There's no way we should be going into any space and the authorities of darkness are having their way. There's no way, absolutely no way. What it means is that we have to be willing and this is the responsibility of this power that we carry. We have to be willing to live differently. We have to be willing to be completely set apart. We have to be willing to say things are possible when it's been said they're impossible. We have to be willing to have the courage to put our faith on the line and declare life where there's no life. That takes courage. That takes courage. It means that you can never go into a space and think you're gonna be normal. It means that you have to sit that. It means that you just have to be okay with the fact that you're gonna be different, that you're gonna start wars. I mean, Jesus said that his arrival and his presence would turn brother against brother. You have to be okay with the fact that your very presence as a mobile temple raises eyebrows. And have to be okay with the fact that sometimes they'll try to destroy the temple because of what the temple stands for, because of the highways, the highways, the highways of God that this temple demands. Sometimes they'll try to destroy the temple. Sometimes they'll destroy the temple, but the presence of God that is within that temple can never be destroyed. And so the temple will be built up again. So the first temple was destroyed in war because of the, of the, of the disobedience of the Israelites. That defeat happened. And so Sometimes the temple will be destroyed because of disobedience, right? Sometimes the temple will be destroyed because of disobedience. Sometimes the temple will be destroyed because of what it stands for, as in the second temple, because of the discomfort that people have with what this temple stands for, highways of God, because of the light that this temple is. But what I want to assure you today is that even if they have tried to destroy you as the temple, even if they have, and it might look like they've succeeded, that temple will be built up again. The temple will be built up again. And the very presence of God can never be destroyed. Throughout the story that we're telling of the different temples, it's Genesis where we're in the image of God and we, and, and we carry the very presence of God. It's the tabernacle that is moving around and is a moving temple. It's the first temple, it's the second temple. They all get destroyed. The presence of God is everlasting. The presence of God can never be destroyed. The presence of God never leaves. The presence of God is consistent and is always there. And so, Temples can be destroyed, they'll be built up again. The presence of God that lives in that temple can never be destroyed. The very presence of God that you carry, the very image of God that you made, and that can never be destroyed. God will build up the temple again. And if you're at a place right now where you feel like they're coming for this temple, they're coming for this temple, they're aiming at this temple, 
they're even hitting this temple. I can feel it. The very presence of God that is in you, the very presence of God that you carry, the very image of God that you are can never be destroyed. If there are chips, they will be built up again. I just want to encourage you in that. That was not part of anything <laughs> that I, I planned to share. But it's just in my spirit to say that the presence of God in you cannot be destroyed. And as we go to talk about Jesus, the most perfect tent, I want to say that you're perfected forever. But anyway. Let's move on. So I want us to please read Hebrews 9, 11. I actually want to pray a little bit. Um, I want to pray. Heavenly um, Father, I just want to bring to you right now in this moment, Anybody who is on this call, the person on this call, the people on this call, the people who aren't on this call, who are part of this tribe, who are part of this community, who feel discouraged, the people who feel broken, the people who feel like they've been defeated. I want to bring them to you, Lord. I want to I want to speak life, Father. I want to speak life by the authority of the blood of Jesus that we've been given. I wanna speak life. I wanna speak a revival of the spirit, Father. I wanna speak encouragement to their souls in this moment. And I make a declaration, Lord, that there's encouragement. I make a declaration, Lord, that they, they're encouraged, that they are restored. I pray, Heavenly Father, that they would know that you're rebuilding, that you're rebuilding, Lord, um, that they would know that um, their soul, that the very presence of you, that it's in your hands, Lord, that while it may look like defeat, that Heavenly Father, your ways are higher than our ways and things that may look like defeat in our eyes often they're actually victory. I want to thank you that you're raising them up in more power, Heavenly Father. Pray for an encouragement in this moment. I pray that they would know it and know it for sure. I pray that they would know the power that lands through them that has never left. And that Heavenly Father, they would be prepared for the next season that you're taking them into where they will multiply this power, they will multiply the knowledge of God and the knowledge of Christ and this very presence, mighty God. I thank you. I thank you for the healing and the rebuilding that you're doing even as we speak. I thank you that our words that they build, that our words are life. And I thank you that these words right now, because of the authority of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord, that these words that we speak right now, that mighty God, they are rebuilding and they are restoring in the name of Jesus. Amen. So uh, we were going to go to Hebrews um, and we were going to read from Hebrews. I think it was 9 11. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not of this creation. So Jesus comes as the ultimate temple after the temples have been destroyed um, and rebuilt of which the third hasn't been rebuilt. But Jesus comes as the temple. It's a temple that can actually never be destroyed. 
as a temple that after that destruction of the cross comes to life again in three days. Um, I want you to write down this thing or note this that I want you to ask God. I'm still asking, I'm still asking. And, and, and I want to say this to you and I want you to please ask God this and maybe the next time we meet, you, you're gonna have a, a response and an answer. But I wanna, I, I've been asking God what it means that when, when God comes incarnate as a human being, this is the greater and more perfect tent. So Yeshua's body was the greater and more perfect tent. So I want you to ask God what that means and, that, and what that means about you. So God comes to earth. God comes to earth in human form. And that is the greater and more perfect tent. So that's a question putting a pause on that. It's a question and maybe you'll have an answer even by the end that I, I want to ask you to ask God. So Jesus comes and is the presence of God and is God incarnate. Jesus comes as the sacrifice for all time. And Jesus comes and does all these great things dies, rises again, and then says, greater things than these will you do. Greater things than, <laughs> than the greatest things that have ever been done in the world will you do. That, that for me is such a commissioning as a mobile tent. As a, as a mobile temple, the sense that Jesus came, Jesus was a, the ultimate temple, and then said, greater things than these will you do. Greater things than these will you do. Jesus comes. It's the presence of God in human form, lives this miraculous, incredible life, and says, greater things than these will you do. Then, on top of all that, there's the stuff that, you know, this series has been incredible for me because I've, I, I've been discovering things that, I, I mean, I would have even been scared to say out loud, but they're scriptural. 2 Corinthians 5.1. Um... Actually, so I've got, I've got it in this version, but I, I need it in another version. It says, for we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, right? So our bodies are the tent. And I want to come back to that, to that issue of um, Jesus being the greater and more perfect tent. So note that as well as you ask God that question. So Jesus comes, the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate temple. And then we are to do greater things than even Jesus did. The first thing is that there's reference to us in that this very tent can be destroyed, but we have a, a building from God, a house, not made with hands, that is eternal in the heavens. Hold on to that. And then we go to Hebrews 10, 14. Hebrews 10, 14 says, for by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Now, here we are with these vessels, with these temples, making note, of Jesus, the greater and more perfect tent. But here's something, we've been perfected forever. 
we've been perfected forever. Those who have faith in him have been perfected forever. This is what Paul says. I'm not, it's, not, it's not me saying it. He has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. And so we're being sanctified. And, perfect, and we have been perfected forever. So the work has already been done. The work is already accomplished. The work is already finished. I'm speaking now to somebody who sits there and says, I can't be a mobile temple. I'm not worthy of being a mobile temple. You have been perfected forever. The work is done. It has been completed. As you are being sanctified daily, you've been perfected forever. So we're mobile temples. We're mobile temples who will do greater things than these. We are mobile temples that have been perfected forever and are being sanctified daily. We're mobile temples or moving temples that are carriers of God's law in our hearts and in our minds. We said earlier that the power of God comes through us, lands on us with the vessels. God doesn't come here and make himself known for us to see him in the physical. God makes himself known through us and his power is made known through us. But God's law is in our heart and mind and that is made known through us. It's not even only just made known through what we say, it's made known by who we are. Our very presence needs to make known the law in our hearts and in our minds, which is the law of God. I want to make reference um, to then two verses down, which is verse 16, Hebrews 10, 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds, I will write them. And so as we are mobile temples, we become these, the, the, these temples that are power, these, power, these temples that are sanctified, these, these temples that are perfected forever, these temples that are doing greater things than these. But also we are these temples through which the laws of God abide in our hearts and in our minds they've been written. And so when Paul talks about the renewal of our minds, I, I, I want to, and I'm going to say it in, in King James language, I want to beseech you to know that carrying the laws of God is not about a self-righteousness and a trying to make sure that we know everything scripture says and being these people that are regurgitating scripture. It is about our minds, our very minds being rewired so that our very lives and our very presence and how we live can only live, can only live the kingdom. They can only live God's mind. They can, we can only live God's law. We, we have no other option. We have no other way because God's law is in our minds. It's not, it's not something we go looking for. It's not something we recite. It's a thing that we have become God's laws and his, his mind has become our mind. So we're not going around looking. We're not going around searching. It has, it is everything that is in here. It is who we have become. Our minds have been rewired to be, to be the very mind of God. The laws of God are the, our very presence, who we are. Our mind is rewired and is renewed and we now carry the, we like, guys, we are it. We are it. We don't have to question before I can even know that this. So I must know this. Even if I don't know that there's a scripture that says this, I must know it because I carry the very mind of God. My mind has been rewired to be the very mind of God. You hear what I'm saying? I, I don't have to, I don't have to go looking. Does it say this here? My mind has become the mind of God. My mind has become the mind of God. And the significance of that, the power in that, 
It's not just only because it means that I live well. It means that I know the mind of God for the company that I work in. It means that I know the mind of God for the family that I'm a part of. It means that I know the mind of God for education in my country. It means that I know the mind of God for the nation that I'm a part of. It means that I know the mind of God for the community that I live in. Like I know the mind of God. I know the mind of God because my mind has been renewed. And I've been transformed to be the presence of God in this earth. And so that's who we are as mobile temples. That is who we are as moving temples. We are, we are places of worship. <laughs> so we are, we, we are bowed down to authority. So the very presence of God, we are vessels of sacrifice, of joyful sacrifice. We understand the reward of sacrifice. We're joyful at sacrificing the things, the, the meaningless and fleeting things of the world for the kingdom. It means we are perfected forever. It means we are the very power of God. It lands on the earth through us and it is multiplied. It means we are, we carry, we are the very mind of God. That is what, that is what it means to be mobile temples. And so mighty God, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for your very presence. We thank you that you dwell in us. We thank you that everywhere we go, there's a presence of heaven. There's a presence of the very creator of the heavens and the earth, the very presence of Jesus, the presence of Holy Spirit comes into every space that we go into. We thank you, Lord, for this consciousness. We thank you for awakening our consciousness to your presence. We thank you for awakening our consciousness to your presence in us. Thank you for awakening our consciousness to the work of your presence through us, mighty God. I thank you, Father God, that as of now, every time we walk, every time we walk into a space, every time we work, when we interact with people, we are aware that we are the very presence of God interacting with the world. We thank you, mighty God, that you are perfecting us every single day, that we're perfected, that we are ready for this work and for this great privilege of carrying your presence into the spaces that we go in. We thank you, mighty God, for a power that is in us, that emanates through us. I thank you for that anointing in the name of Jesus. I speak it over every single person on this call. I speak that consciousness over every single person on this call, mighty God. I thank you for a new leash on life, for a new lease on life. I thank you, mighty God, for a, a, an, an energized, an energized awareness of your presence, an energized awareness of your power, an energized awareness of your brilliance. I thank you, Lord, that you are awakening the knowledge and 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 the brilliance of who you are. I thank you, mighty God, that Holy Spirit, you're going to be reminding us to tap into that brilliance every single day. I thank you, mighty God, that as we live and as we walk and as we work, this brilliance, it is who we are. We tap into it. We tap into the resource of the brilliance of the power of God that is at work in us, mighty God. I thank you that we are tapping into the love, the abounding love as we interact with people, as we interact with people that annoy us people that try to crush us, people that try to break us, that we are aware and we have a consciousness of the love of God, the Father, the love of Jesus and of the Holy Spirit and the grace of the Trinity that is in us. Thank you for awakening and reminding us of the grace and the love that is in us, mighty God. I thank you for a reminder of who we are as mobile and moving temples, mighty God. I thank you that you're doing a new thing in us, mighty God. I thank you that we are the remnant through which you are bringing your kingdom to the earth. We are ready, Lord. We are so ready. We're so ready. We're so ready. We receive you. We receive you and we're ready to be everything that you are. 
in this world. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Yo, thanks, my love. Thanks for allowing God yo, to really talk through you this evening. Yo, who thought Wednesday would be such a rejuvenating space and a space where we can just drink from as well and just, you know, just, just come out stronger than we were when we came in. So, yeah, thanks. Thanks, my love. So much appreciated. So much to take out from there. Um, yeah, just, you know, yeah, that's on my side, guys. I'm just, just open it to the floor just for, uh, if you want to answer that question <laughs> and that no to pose, what it means to be, um, what it means to be, um, perfected. Well, sorry, what, what, what it means, uh, when, 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 when God, when Jesus was the perfect tent tent and what it means to you so if you're ready to answer that question feel free or if any other comments you want to put uh can i open the floor for that i end up may i speak yeah of course you go ahead sorry i muted yeah yo no wonder you have freed me you have freed me. Um, or right, well, through, through the Holy Spirit in me has freed me in that, and I was actually speaking to Ovoyo about this um, over the weekend. Uti, one thing I struggle with is the project manager inside me. And what that pro project manager inside me does is I think about all the things that I see as characteristic of Christ. So the Christ-likeness things, and they become um, idols in a sense, because then I create a to-do list of all the things I need to do to fix myself. Um, and it be I turn myself into a project where I am constantly trying to perfect myself, and I'm trying to be more self-aware of my faults so that I can correct and it becomes this frantic need and desire to just correct everything, correct everything. I need to be this perfect temple. And what this word that you've brought this evening has done is that it showed me that the finished work in Jesus, the finished work of Jesus on the cross means that I can declare um, the completeness of the work in me. So rather than me focusing on being my own project and managing myself as a project, I can declare and surrender to the power of God as he transforms my and renews my mind and transforms my spirit. So for me, this has just been an exhale in Gabonga. Uh, Andy, you can go next. <laughs> Yeah, uh, for me, <laughs> you know, I'm sitting here and I was listening to your notes, and one of the things that 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 strikes me is how much I need to repent, you know, for for being a stumbling block to God's work, in the sense that. You, you disqualify yourself even when God has qualified you. Uh, even when God has sent you, you decide that you are unsendable. And so you don't go. <laughs> but God has pointed his finger on you, has given you direction. And then you come back to God and you are in a state of confusion because you did not go where God said you must go, but you don't know where you are supposed to go. So you're in this state of confusion because God has given you direction, but you chose to go somewhere else and he, that he has not capacitated you for. And, you know, and, and so I, I feel that I need to repent because I, I looked at myself through my own eyes and decided that in fact, the power of God is not strong enough to 
be at work in this uh, vessel that I think that I am. And you are saying now that the work is, we are perfected, we are done. And so it does not matter what we, who we think we are, what is most important is who does God say we are and we walk in that. And um, in the last week, I was just struck by a revelation of, of humility and what humility does um, for us. Um, because you see, humility, e- e- humility that makes you say, okay, God, mm-hmm. I know the state that I am in, but because you said I will do it, that is humility. Humility um, is hum- the practice of humility is repentance. So when we repent, we are recognizing the fact that God is God and we are an image of who he is. And therefore, because we are an image of who he is, we desire to become more and more like him. And therefore we will stand before him and repent for things that we know and for things we don't know because not only for ourselves, but also for our communities and for our nations. Our prayer stops being about, I am sorry, but our prayer becomes, we are sorry. And the more we put our, our, ourselves in our communities and in our nation and we pray like that, we begin to, re, we begin to see our communities and our nation the way that God wants, wants us to see it. So thank you very much, my sister. I, I, this, this was an in-time word. Thank you. Yo. Yeah, I'm praying for repentance. I'm praying right now in repentance to God as you speak. And yo, I, so true. So true. So, so true. Amen. Amen. Not sure if there's anyone else. Um, on my no, side. No, no, Go ahead. Okay. Um, on my side, the key takeaway was the fact that, you know, she emphasized that the resurrective power of God lives in us. And no matter what the enemy can try, you know, he cannot destroy the temple of God or the presence of God um, in us. And I, I began having a visual image of the Ark of the Covenant, that the wings of the cherubim were covering it. And I think about how detailed God was that this very presence is covered. No one and nothing can touch it. Even the articles that were inside the temple the way they washed their hands before they performed the show bread. And Sis Nob saying that, you know, we are carriers of his word and that this word is now inscribed in our hearts. So wherever we are and wherever we tap into, we are powerhouses and understanding that there's a covering over us and nothing can penetrate that covering because God, he is the one, he is the alpha, and the Omega. Amen. Thank you. Guys, the floor is still all yours. Uh. What I'm realizing when I am there is supposed to be being a temple is either you are or you aren't. It's like being pregnant. It's either you are or you aren't. You can't be half, you can't be a quarter, you can't be almost there. It's either you are or you aren't. And I think that's the, the, the that's one of the most powerful things that I've taken out of today. That it's not about being partially perfected. It's not about being partially, because it's like, did God part, did Jesus partially die? 
on the cross? Was he partially insulted on the cross? No, he died and he rose again. Sonji, Lendo, it's just, yo, 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 it's you lead. Like it keeps, it keeps multiplying in my mind. It's like, it's, it's, it's having babies in my mind because it's just, it's, it's producing in my mind, all these thoughts. Wait, there's so much more to this. We can't take lightly the fact that we are what Unobuntu has just told us we are. Because it changes everything. It's a game changer. Like you, it, it, it can't be sure. In, it, like you can't just carry on as normal and it not affect you. Um, yo, I mean, uh, this thing is big. Mm. You know, of course, the, that thing of not being able to carry on as normal, you know, I see now I'm reading some of the comments mentioned something about you can't blend in um, even if you tried. So even if you try to hide, even if you try to, you know, blend in, even if you actually just can't, <laughs> you actually just can't. Once, um, once, once you are conscious of the presence of God in you and once the Lord has opened your eyes to what that means. Once that is revealed to you, you can never, you just can never live the same ever again. It changes everything about you. So I, 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 I mean, I'm, I don't know if I've shared this with you guys. I probably have, but for me, I've been through a process of God. Like I can't see anything the same. So I can't see something like the foods I eat, right? in this being a, a moving temple thing. So I, I can't see the foods I eat the same. So I can't, like my, my, my habits can't be the same. Like I can't, they can't be the same anymore. I can't live the life I was living. I, I can't live a life that is prayerless. Like I, it, it's impossible. I, I literally can't do it anymore. Whereas before I, did, I got away with it a lot. I used to be able to get away with it with a life that isn't as prayerful as it should be, but I, I can't. So once you have this understanding of a temple that that requires, you know, there's, 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 there's all these requirements and demands of a temple that is a, that is a dwelling place mm -hmm. of the presence of God that you just can't ignore. So not only can you not be the same and blend in, and, but your own life, cannot be the same your your rising and waking cannot be the same you can't be somebody who's not in 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 communication and in constant fellowship with god the creator once you understand that you are a vessel of his very presence like you just can't you know you can't be someone who who carries on with with the same habits that don't that don't contribute to the work of the kingdom i don't know if you get what i'm saying you you just you just can't you're never the same again and don't try so what i've learned is don't try to be don't try to be you're a walking altar yeah that's exactly it you're a walking altar uh, and and it's a, it's a thing, and I spoke about acceptance because it's a thing that I struggled with for a while. It was like, this can't be my life. But there is such a peace and a joy in just accepting that this is who I am. My, my heart, my spirit, it yearns for God. It yearns for God's direction. Every single day and every single little thing. I mean, some things seem like you shouldn't be asking. Every single little thing. No, the thing about temples is the things that used to happen there, it was always either something is being washed with amanzi or something is being burned. So it's either you washing something or burning something. Um, and it reminds me of the, 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 that showdown, uh, Elijah with the, false, uh, with the false prophets, where his altar, his, his sacrifice was drenched in water. Um, and, and that whole process before the fire came down from heaven. 
So Mina, it's all about this thing that there has to be, it's either being cleansed or something is being burned so that it dies. You can't have, you can't have an altar where there's no experience of either water or fire. <laughs> so sometimes we feel like we're drowning. Sometimes we feel like we're being burned, but there needs to be an activity of purification one way or other. Sure. Oh, true. Oh, true. Oh, true. Sorry, so sorry, but <laughs> well, let, you know, I'm I'm realizing that <laughs> if we we are built for worship, we are built as altars, as as temples, ne? But it is you who decides who is the one who will be worshipped in the temple. It is you who decides who will not be worshipped in this temple. Um, the, you know, Nobund is talking about, uh, you know, your, your, the, the way you view is in this tea, like, the food that you eat and whatever the case may be. And I realize that we, there, are, there are things that we we then begin to worship in this temple that are not God, that are not of God. And they take over our lives. And when you come to, as Nobunda says, the, the consciousness of God's presence, we understand the power that we have in simply saying no. The choice we have to say no. When you decide to say no to something you have been saying yes to, immediately it begins to move out of you. But the, the enemy will, is one of the things about the enemy is that he's very persistent and you will persistently come knocking. But you have the power to say, go away. The Bible says, uh, submit to God resist the devil and he will flee so the more we submit to god the more we are able to say no to him and then he must go away so just to add on to this guys there's there's something about when you set yourself apart where there's a sort of crab in a bucket syndrome or there's a hating syndrome or something or somebody will want to say bad things about you. But when you're immersed with the masses, nothing, like no one says anything bad about you because you are just part of, if it's something that's wrong being done, you throw it, just, you're also part of that wrong and there's nothing that sets you apart in that space. So there's something about being perfected in God and being Christ-like that creates, you know, a, that 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 I need to pull him down or just, you know, bring him down. And there's something beautiful. That means there's something beautiful and scary at the same time in being perfected in him. Um, and when you realize that you're perfected in him, you just definitely start to set yourself apart. And it's just, you see it by the people and the, the things that happen around you. So yeah, I just wanted to share that as well. Tubbs, I see your hand. Thanks, Linda. Sorry, guys. Yeah, guys, I think for me. Sorry, Tubbs. Sorry, Tubbs. Before you carry, sure. just uh, just from a, a timeline point of view, guys, we probably got two more minutes left before we close out in prayer, and then uh, we have a little after party for those who want to stay after and just to carry on chatting and just you know. Carry on, carry on unpacking. So, Tubbs, go ahead. Sure. Thanks, Andrew. Um, yeah, so just two things. Thanks so much, Nobs, for, for the share. Um, I think for me, you know, just being one of the, the revelations or transitions that's helped with this for me from the Holy Spirit is understanding that this is, it's a symbol of God's grace and mercy, right? Um, this is God redeeming Eden. This is him an act from him to restore us back to his original design, which is we dwell within his presence and therefore we are glory carriers because his glory is in us and kind of comes to the world through us. And I just 
as you're sharing, I was thinking of how something I always kind of wrestled with, not wrestled, but never understood maybe was why Christ said to the disciples, I've got to go because if I don't go, then the Holy Spirit can't come. And it was because he recognized that though he was with them, the coming of the Holy Spirit would mean that God is in everybody, you know, because when Christ was in human form, how far he could move was limited by his presence. He could do the acts. He could walk with the disciples and tell them, you can do what I do. But with the Holy Spirit coming, truly the nations would be his inheritance because then, you know, to the ends of the world, the glory of God would travel through these walking um, temples, if I could call them that. And so for me, I think recognizing that the fact that God would indwell in us um, is his mercy and his grace fulfilled. It is an act of love, um, of such love for us that he wants to redeem us back to that moment um, in the garden where we can still walk in the coolness of the afternoon with him and hear him all the time and, and be with him all the time and be in relationship. And so I think, Kosi, as you're sharing about how free you feel for me, one of the things that freed me was realizing that beyond everything else, this is about relationship. Um, it really is, you know, a relational transformation that happens um, with, and therefore we walk with the power and we walk with the glory and we walk with all of those things because we are in relationship with God again. Thanks, guys. Thank you, can we pray? Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you again this evening for just allowing you, allowing your grace, allowing your love, allowing your spirit to manifest in this place, Lord, Heavenly Father. Thank you for allowing us to just to, to just be open to your word, Lord, Heavenly Father. And just as a reminder, Lord, I'm your father, and as we just got together this Wednesday, I think uh, we don't know in terms of how we how we got here, Lord, I'm your father, and how fatigued we were. Some people feeling the stress of the year. Some people are just fatigued from work. Some are just just tired, Lord, I'm your father, of just just being in this world, Lord, I'm your father. And what it comes with, Lord, I'm your father. We thank you that we had this opportunity to dial in this evening, Lord, and my Father, and be rejuvenated by your will, Lord, and my Father, and we be refreshed like a, like a fresh spring in the day of the Lord, and my Father. And thank you, Lord, and my Father, this evening, Lord, and my Father. And just in part, Lord, and my Father, as we engage this week, may we walk in the perfect image or the perfect vessel that you've made us, Lord, and your Father, and not be afraid of the sacrifice that it comes with, Lord, and your Father. And if we are, Lord, and your Father, may we just seek and bow down to your authority, Lord, and your Father, as you just move doors and move ahead of Lord, and your Father, and making sure that this vessel that you've made, Lord, and your Father, shines and shines for your glory, Lord, and your Father. And for everybody who's gathered here this evening and the families, Lord, and your Father, may you just bless them for the coming week, Lord, and your Father. May you just rejuvenate them, Lord, and your Father. May your face shine upon them, Lord, and your Father. And we ask this in your great and mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, fam. I'm going to have to go. Um, thank you, sis mom, for joining us. Was it what? Was it what? Was it what? Was it what? So quiet. So quiet. <laughs> Before you, you go, Kati, to... how are you? Let me get a talking. How much, Kati, how are you? Long time, man. Thanks for joining. She's still on. Yeah. I'm good. Thank you. It's good being here. <laughs> <laughs> and hi. Hey. And hi, Matepo. Before you run. Matepo Nang, a city, a city, thank you, Sephora Lega, before she says hi. 
Hey, don't run away. We know you're in the background. <laughs> I'm literally trying to run away. Don't run away. Come now. Oh. I'm completely oh, yeah. blown away. <laughs> I'm very convicted. I've been walking around with not knowing that I have the mind of Christ. Sure. Yeah, not exercising that knowledge mm. that I have the mind of Christ about stuff, you know? Mm. Yeah, so. Mm. Naming Sayo repent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. Good night, fam. I'm okay, going. Okay, guys. Bye. Bye. Good night, fam. Good night, us. Hello. Hello. Goodbye. Galaxy A31. One Galaxy A31. Sorry, it's it's Stella. Um, I've been trying hey. to change the name. I'm good, thank you. I've been trying to change the name uh, to no avail. I didn't mean to be anonymous. <laughs> no, good man. night. I'm just, I'm just joking, man. Yeah, have a great evening. Thanks for joining, Stella. And have okay. a great week further, man. May you rock thank it hard. You. Thank you very much. Good night. Okay. <laughs> good night.